Casting a four barrel throttle body, a gravity die casting in 601 alloy. Part four, feeder removal. So the next thing we have to do is remove the, the big feeder here. Uh, so we have to get from that to that basically. Uh, and then all I do is put them in the heat treat oven and give them a T5 heat treat and then deliver them to my customer. Removing a, uh, a feeder this size is not all that easy. I originally tried to do it with a bandsaw and believe me, it's quite difficult to get a, a flat cut across this sort of an area. Remembering in particular that the filter is, is actually sitting just a little bit above this cut in this area here and you can't cut through the filter, it's a ceramic and it just takes the edge off the blade. So your cut's got to be quite accurate. All right, well, this is the way we do it. I use this... Um, rather old milling machine. Here is a still photo of this machine. It's a Cincinnati number no. two vertical mill. She dates from the era when such machines tended to be very rigid, very heavy, very solid, but somewhat slow. Her nameplate indicates she was made in Britain in 1941, so she's even older than me. So the, the casting fits in this little jig clamped in with a couple of over centre clamps. And slowly shorn off with the uh, cold saw blade. Not exactly the quickest process, but it does work quite well. I can only go halfway through, of course, and I have to be very careful I don't hit the plant. <laughs> Little bit of WD-40 on the blade every now and then. This is a bit slow to watch, so let's speed it up by a factor of about eight. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a little bit better, isn't it? That's halfway. Turn it round, put it back. And do the other side. That's one off. You can see the filter sitting just in there. Uh, and uh, the cut just goes between the flange on the casting and the bottom of the filter. It just squeaks through. Next one. And away we go again. Well, finally after a day of making a little shell funnel cores, uh, several days of setting the die up, getting it clean, getting it lubricated, getting it in the machine, getting the furnace ready and all that sort of stuff, and then a, a rather exhausting day casting uh, with the help of a, a very good friend who came around, we now have this stack of castings. There's 62 of them here, uh, possibly the best day we've ever had with this die. And, you know, that's not, to me, a, an unimpressive stack. I'm, I'm quite thrilled with that. Um, it's quite a large number of castings. 
and I'll just move around and we'll get a bit of a better look as I go, I hope. And it, it's a process that it seems to make a pretty reasonable looking casting. Not too shabby at all, they're, they're quite nice. As a sort of a postscript to this saga of the four barrel throttle bodies, I thought I'd mention this stuff here. We call it swarf in Australia, but I understand the rest of the world calls it chips. What do I do with this stuff? Well, to me, it's just garbage. Many people would say, melt it down, but I don't think that's a good thing to do at all. Each bit of this, it's quite small, each piece, and each piece is surrounded by a, a very tough, tenacious, but thin film of aluminium oxide. And when you melt it down, what you wind up with is millions of little bags of, of uh, aluminium oxide uh, around a minute drop of molten aluminium. Now, you can beat it around with a big stick or whatever and you will break the little bags and the aluminium will run out and hopefully all join up, but it's about the same weight as the oxide, so the two of them don't separate. Um, they just all swim around together very um, happily and that's not a good situation. I, I did it once years ago to a huge quantity of swarf and I wound up with about a gallon sized crucible, an A25 I think it was, um, just full of what looked remarkably like porridge. It was lumpy, uh, thick, not at all fluid, and the hotter I got it, the thicker and lumpier it got. Now, I was able to separate the oxide out in a, in a roundabout way, but that, as the barkeep said in the film Irma La Douce, is another story. And the metal I got anyway was pretty junky. It was still uh, pretty full of oxide. Uh, I used it for some non-critical castings, some of my own moulding boxes from memory. Uh, and it would have been very weak. It would have been porous uh, and generally not good stuff. So my advice to anyone is don't melt this crap down. It's contaminated also with the WD-40. Terrible stuff. And the other thing I won't be melting down is this. This is from the bottom of my dross bucket. And as you can see, it contains a fair amount of metal. In fact, it weighs about two kilos and probably about a kilo of that's recoverable metal. But again, it's contaminated. There's all sorts of flux in it. There's an old one of the filters we use that floated up when we removed the, uh, the funnel cores. The funnel cores, of course, are all through it, as are the, the bits of skin, skulls we call them, that uh, actually uh, come out of the ladle and I, I clean those out between each pour. It's, it too contains a lot of oxide and it too is absolute garbage and while I could melt it and get something out of it, the cost of the fuel, the time, wear and tear on the furnace, crucibles etc etc and the garbage I'd wind up with or the, the low quality metal I'd wind up with is just not worth it. I firmly believe in the old, old saying, garbage in, garbage out. And if this is the sort of garbage you're going to put into your castings, then your chance of ever producing good quality castings are not very good. Uh, I certainly would advise anyone who's seriously trying to make half-decent castings not to melt this sort of stuff down. Just do what I'm going to do with it. Throw it in the bin and forget it. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video series.